Hey, I want to thank you for being here. You can get more conversations like this one on arrow.net, A-R-R-O-E dot net. Let's play it forward. Real people, real stories, the struggle to play it forward. Episode number 545 is with Dr. Rama Shelapa, author of Can We Trust AI? Good morning, Mr. Collins. I'm doing great, and uh, thanks for having me on your show. Thank you so much, because what you're doing is you're stepping into the future, because this is an unknown area that we, where we presently stand. We, we, we've always heard of AIs, but it was always associated with movies. This is really going on. <laughs> well, what I like to say, Mr. Collins, is that if AI were a human being uh, in our country, it would be ready to collect Social Security and Medicare. It's actually 66 years old. <laughs> <laughs> because it, you know the 1956 is when you know some of the best minds in the country met at Dartmouth and and wondering about you know started wondering about what this field is going to look like and so artificial intelligence was born kind of at that time so I like to tell people it looks like AI hey, just came last week but no it's been around. <laughs> I had no clue. I honestly had no clue because I did think that it was something that popped out of the 1990s as we were jumping into this digital age. Uh, no, it's been there since, uh, it, as a formal field of study, I would say from the mid-60s onwards, yes, it's been there. Yeah. So what are the challenges that AIs have had to face over the decades? Oh, yeah. I think in the early years, uh, AI was pretty much uh, based on rule-based systems and so on. It had some idea, that the, the, you know, people who build AI systems for example, for speech recognition, for you know, understanding images, and and so on, uh, we understood the the rules of the game. You know, for example, in the early days, game playing was big. You know, can AI beat a chess player? Right, Kasparov. You remember the, the late nineties, and so on. Because there were rules, and you could program them, and AI can look ahead. You know, thirty moves and forty moves, whereas humans probably the best ones look six or eight moves. So there was focus on using domain knowledge, uh, you know, into computer programs. Now, what has happened since 2012 is we are able to process all the data we have uh, using powerful computers, and so now we are able to make informed decisions from the data. So before, I call it the domain-driven, now it's data-driven, and I think sometime soon we will put them both together to make AI in human do better things for us. So that's where it is right now. So the change is uh, from being a rule-based system uh, or a model-based system, now we are mostly driven by data because there is data everywhere. Take, for example, uh, medicine, right? Uh, We have electronic health records. We have diagnostic images like MRIs and CT, you know, and X-rays. And then even conversations between doctors and patients, you know, could be understood by uh, natural language processing systems. And so the AI can continue to work with these things and look for any potential uh, issues um, that can be brought to the attention of the attending physician. So that those are all the good examples. One of the things that that's, uh, I, I guess, be because I you know, American businesses and stuff like that, major corporations such as iHeartRadio and Amazon and people like this have announced that AI services are, are what's helping them become stronger companies. But at the same time, a lot of people are losing their positions and their jobs. But but they don't see that as being a threat. It just says, no, you, you can go do something else now because we're going to let the AIs do what, what we you were doing. Yeah, but Mr. Collins, this has been going on since the Industrial Revolution, yeah. right? It's not just happening as AI. You know, in the good old days, uh, you know, when, when machines came and, you know, people were uh, losing jobs and so forth. But this, this, this happens all the time. When a new technology comes, some jobs may be lost. But I think we need to help uh, people who are affected uh, retrain them and then you know get them uh, to do the new uh, thing. So, uh, for example, let me give a simple example. In this late 70s, when I was a graduate student, I will actually go to a physical travel agency and buy my ticket. There, you know, I don't know. You remember that? Yes. And now, who goes there? We all do it using uh, you know airline website. So, what happened to all those jobs? Well, uh, they probably temporarily were lost. But the people who were you know, affected by it, you know, uh, you know, somebody should help them to get better trained, better you know, uh, educated and so on. And so they can look at other uh, kinds of jobs. So this has been happening, I don't know, I would say 200 years, right? Uh, the churning of things as new technologies come. So, you know, 
So people tend to blame me <laughs> for everything. I say, no, it, it, it's going to do good things. So let's let's put things in perspective. That's all I say. Well, see, and that's why this book is so important. That that we because we all have these these assumptions, and we all sit there and point fingers and stuff like that. But you you really do lay it out inside this book, and it's called "Can We Trust AIs?" And and I just I just love the way that that you put it in such a a simple format of better understanding. Now, one of the questions I wanted to bring up: self driving vehicles and diminishing privacy. We've got a positive and we've got a negative because I mean the, the positive is self driving vehicles. The negative. Uh oh, where's my privacy? Yes, I agree with you. Self driving vehicles will, uh, you know, reduce traffic accidents, uh, will reduce, um, you know, deaths on our highways and so forth. It is good. Uh, and, you know, I, I don't have a self driving car, but I enjoy all the safety features that come in my car. You know, the alerts, you know, that say there's a car on your, you know, left lane or right lane, so you can't change lanes and things like that, or it tells me. If it thinks I'm going to hit the car in mm-hmm. front of me and so on, those are great tips to have. Now, the, the privacy issue, I think we have to put that in perspective again. Let me give an example. When I go to my grocery store, they ask for my phone number. Yep. You know why? Then $2 of shaving cartridges, $1 of strawberries and things like that. I know exactly what I'm giving up, what I am gaining, right? So well, why should I give my phone number to a supermarket? Well, I understand that. So likewise, we all have to make our individual, you know, uh, choices in terms of what we want to give up and what we are getting back. So that is a delicate uh, balance, and it depends on the individual. It depends on who you are dealing with and so forth. What I find is my generation is very, very careful about privacy. We don't give out anything. But in my, you know, kids' generation, they just put everything up on the, uh, you know, Facebook and this and that, and they're a little bit more open. So... Privacy is, is an important concern, and all AI systems that we design should declare, you know, how this was designed and so forth. It is very, very important. You know, uh, you know, if you look at medicine and so on, when they do trials and things like that, they're extremely careful, right, in terms of how uh, information is protected. You know, I'm also a professor in biomedical engineering in School of Medicine, and we hear HIPAA all the time, how information should be protected. So maybe medicine can teach AI here in terms of, you know, how AI system should be designed, uh, keeping in mind uh, privacy. So I think that is possible, and, and, and we should do that. One of the things that this generation is jumping into like big time is is the metaverse and, and these little universes that people can escape the real world. Are AIs a part of this? And should we be focusing more on the AIs, you know, incorporating our real world more than just jumping into a fake world such as metaverse? Well, <laughs> I think, uh, you know, the current generation uh, likes to be involved in these kinds of, you know, what, what TikTok and all this. I don't have a Twitter account. I don't have a TikTok account. But, yes, a Metaverse is an interesting thing. But remember, those uh, those artificial worlds are sometimes useful for training physicians, for example. I mean, you may have seen the commercial on Metaverse. They, saw, uh, they show somebody, you know, trying to open a, a synthetic heart and so forth. So I think... The idea of metaverse is an extension of what we call as digital twin. For example, if I want to, uh, you know, uh, have a very complicated system as I'm building it, I would like to have a real synthetic system so I can experiment with it. Right? Mm. Uh, you know, there is all cancer immunotherapies. Before you give medicine to the real person, you may like to have a synthetic uh, system where you can put this medicine and see what the impact will be on the cancer cell and so forth. So, you know, one can think of, uh, you know, metaverse uh, in multiple ways. It's basically creating a synthetic world where we can create uh, what's happening in real world and we can simulate it and understand. Have you seen the movie Apollo 13? Yes. 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 When Tom Hanks says, Houston, I have a problem, and somebody in in Houston was recreating uh, the situation and they were doing all these current calculations and so forth they said you can shut this down shut that one or you'll still be able to be you know land uh, land and so on now that is a, sy- a system that simulates exactly you know what probably is happening so it's very useful uh, the idea of uh, metaverse in different applications of course people like to have fun you know they want to go and dance in metaverse or talk to their friends and avatars 
Yes, it's like that stuff, but there are other applications we can think of. Uh, and, and it's not a totally alien concept. As I say, it, you can view it as an extension of a digital twin or what we saw in Apollo 13, you know. You you make it sound so exciting. I mean, I mean, you you have had. I mean, you, you're a student of this every single day, and and you. It's just amazing how you just make it seem like, wow, grow with this because it's going to be with us forever. Yes, I think AI is here to stay. I think uh, you know humans uh, are good at making technology work for them, mostly for good, but sometimes humans also. <laughs> exploit technologies to do bad stuff. So we have to be alert. We have to be careful. And if we find the technology is not working for us, we should go and improve it and fix it. So because what AI is now able to do is to analyze the troves of data uh, that we have. And I I like to point out uh, at Johns Hopkins, we have a platform known as PMAP, Precision Medicine Analytic Platform, which can bring heterogeneous data, your electronic health records from labs and your diagnostic images and, and things. And so AI yeah, can look at them and kind of see what's going on on an individual basis. You know, you can have a privatized, personalized medicine, and that would that is possible. So AI yeah, can do those sorts of things because, you know, humans... We, yeah, we can look at some data, but we cannot look at lots of data, and AI can look at That's right. tons of data. That's right. That's so true. The name of the book, Can We Trust AIs? Listeners need to understand that when they purchase the book, there is a, a code that will get them 30% off, and that is H A I. 30 H A I 30 doctor you got to come back to this show anytime in the future I love where your heart is I love how you are you are sharing with us the, you know the things that, that we fear it but you're saying don't fear it you just be present with it yes let's uh, let's keep AI as our friend but you know sometimes even friends misbehave right <laughs> you're so true that's so true <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So then what do you do? You tell the friend, no, 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 you can't do that. <laughs> right? So we can tell that to you. And yeah, I will. I love it. Will you be brilliant today? Okay, sir? Thank you. Thank you so much. And have a great day. And again, thanks for having me on your show.